So today I'm going to go through how to use an in-check device for healthcare professionals um, to make sure that when you're prescribing an inhaler or you're thinking about an inhaler for a patient, they've got sufficient inspiratory flow to actually get that drug into their bodies. So before I used these and we used to recommend inhalers, um, I've made the mistake of prescribing an inhaler because I thought the drug was going to benefit the patient and they had that inhaler, 30 odd pounds, and they couldn't actually use it and so it's a complete waste of time. So I learned quite quickly, got an in-check device and figured out how to use it. So it's got um, a weight in here and a red circle. Um, so before you use it, you would always do a bang and get the weight and the circle, red circle down to zero. And then you flick it so the weight is then out of the way. So that when the patient inhales, they can move that red circle up and down. And then, uh, as you can see here, there's lots of different colours around the edge. And that corresponds to what inhaler you're trying to use. And there is a really handy guide on here that for most inhalers, although they've there's a lot of new ones lately. Most inhalers are covered on here, so it's already there. You don't have to be faffing about getting the book out or anything. You can just twist the dial to correspond. So if you want to try someone on a meter dosed inhaler and actually practice their technique as well without using the drug a lot, you will turn it to um, an MDI onto zero here. And you can see there's quite a big hole there for that inspiratory flow. I've got my one-way um, filter, so I'm putting that on so I'm not inhaling or doing anything into this and make contaminating this, although I must admit I've not been using it during COVID. It's really hard to do inhaler technique when you have a mask on with your patient. Okay, so that is ready to go once I've done my checks. And I'm just going to pretend I'm going to inhale a meter-dosed inhaler. And you can see when we're looking at this bottom green line, you, my red dial has actually gone too high above that, above the green line. So I've inhaled too hard for a meter dosed inhaler. You actually don't even want them to get off zero in an ideal world. They're inhaling so gently. Um, so the green zone's okay, but let lower down is the best thing. So it's really practicing that low technique. So I'll have another go. And you can see I'm much lower down here with that red bar. So that is perfect for a meter dosed inhaler and you can practice that. Although lots of patients find this quite a big mouthpiece and it's a different shape to the meter dosed inhaler. So sometimes you have to practice with different shapes as well. So for dry powder, every dry powder inhaler requires a different inspiratory flow to trigger it. The harder ones, as it says on here, are the handy inhaler and the easy inhaler, ironically. Um, so you always want to have a check before you go prescribing those ones. Don't just take the name for it. That's just good branding. Um, so I'm just going to move the dial to high, which is the one with all the purple lines. So you line up your dial with this arrow here. So I know that I'm on high in line with this arrow. I've set my red dial to the bottom and my weight is out of the way. And then I'm going to pretend that I'm inhaling the easy inhaler. When you look in, you can see the hole is much smaller, so the resistance is higher to that inspiratory flow. So an out breath first. And I had to work quite hard. <laughs> and I only got halfway, because that shows that level of resistance. And I'm like fit and healthy and I exercise, so that, that is quite hard. I can feel that I've worked hard there, but not normally they're only once or twice a day. Um, but you do need to think twice. You want to make sure you, your patient on a good day can easily get the dose because if they're having an exacerbation, they're not going to have the same inspiratory flow and they're not going to get their drug when they really need it. So you really need to think about that. So that is how you use the in-check. You need to be getting one-way spirometry tubes, not just your standard spirometry tubes. So you need to do a little bit of investigating to get the right equipment. It takes time, it is so worth it, rather than wasting inhalers and the patients losing faith in you. I think getting the basics right goes a long way.